Hello, I'm Rob and thank you for checking out R&B Reviews. I finally found time to do videos on my list for the best and worst slash disappointing movies of 2015. Um, so this video is going to cover the seven movies that I thought were the best from the year. Now I want to be upfront. Um, I wasn't able to go out and see every single movie. Um, unlike probably some of my other, like professional critics and some of my other fellow YouTube reviewers, I don't really always have the time and in some cases the money to see everything that comes out. So for those of you that are watching the video, be like, Rob, how could you not have The Revenant on your list? How could you not have The Hateful Eight on your list? As of now, I haven't seen those movies. I'm going to try and see them as soon as I can. But based on what I have seen, um, th this video is going to cover the movies that I, based on what I have seen so far. And so, um, granted, some of these titles may not be actually on people's list because of, you know, you know, they may not consider it quite up there with some of those other movies. But nonetheless, these are the seven movies that I saw that I thought were the best, and I'm going to go ahead and include them on my list. All right, so let's begin. Number seven on my list is The Avengers, The Age of Ultron. This is the sequel to the incredibly successful film from 2012. It is quite different from the popcorn fun film that came before it. It's a darker film and allows other characters to shine like Hawkeye and Black Widow. And it has more dramatic moments, including um, little bits between Tony Stark and Captain America. Director Joss Wheaton mixes on the edge of your seat action with some comical bits and the wisecracks come at very good times. The movie does suffer from what I call either um, Iron Man 2 Syndrome or Amazing Spider-Man 2 Syndrome where there's a lot of subplots and characters that are thrown in and some perhaps get more attention than others. And Ultron, despite wanting to wipe out mankind, I didn't really find the character quite to be as interesting, but I did admire the movie for being different from the first Avengers film. Number six on my list is Paddington. Now I know there's going to be some viewers going, Rob, the movie came out in 2014. Well, not maybe internationally, but here in the United States, the movie came out in January of 2015. It was supposed to come out on Christmas Day of 2014, and it didn't. So I'm going to count it as a 2015 film. Now Paddington, the movie was loads of fun, and I uh, probably the most that I had in the theaters this past year. It is a silly, funny get a gag-filled, quirky film with quick jokes, and it does have some unique storytelling. For example, there's a sequence where um, they, the filmmakers use a dollhouse to explain uh, the Brown family. That's the family that Paddington comes to live with, and I thought that was a good way to um, sort of you know show us who the characters were. And Paddington, he's a sort of fish out of water character that is constantly getting into trouble, and the rest of the characters, you know, the Brown family has very contrasting personalities. The movie's theme about family coming together and, you know, not wanting to be around each other at first, but eventually coming together, I found to be very relatable. And the, and, um, I, the main plot with, you know, Paddington trying to fit in with the family, I found to be a little more interesting than the subplot where villain Nicole Kidman is going after Paddington to try and, you know, stuff her for, uh, sorry, stuff him for um, her collection. Ben Wishlaw is the voice of Paddington, and he plays the part really well. He's kind of like a cross between child and adult and I thought he was just you know perfect for that part and Hugh Bonneville and Sally Hawkins play the parents in the Brown family um, I think it is a movie that has you know meaning and I think it's something that you know the characters everybody can relate to so for me it was a good fun film number five on my list is Star Wars The Force Awakens now I do have some nitpicks with the movie if you want to check out my spoiler and spoil free review like I said, I, I do admit there were I did have some nitpicks with the film. For example, I did notice that there were some sim similarities in, with some scenes, you know, similar to other scenes from other Star Wars movies, and some of the CGI, like the villain, a Supreme Leader Snork, you know, kind of looked cartoonish, and I would, I wish they had used an actual live action actor, kind of like. Um, make him a little bit shadowy, but with all that aside, I thought Star Wars The Force Awakens was an exciting action fantasy film. I thought the acting was terrific. I mean, Jace, uh, sorry, John Boyega plays an ex-stormtrooper who doesn't want to fight anymore for the uh, New Order or the First Order, and I think that will definitely resonate with audiences, and Daisy Ridley as Rey was really credible as somebody who is new to this world that she finds herself in. Harrison Ford um, gives a great performance as usual as Han Solo, and as with the other Star Wars movie, it is visually terrific. The costumes, the sets, the photography, and some of the CGI. And the special effects were not showy, they really fit in with the story. In some movies, you know, sometimes the sh uh, special effects are done just to show off and they take over the story, not with uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, I think it really complemented the movie. 
Um, the action scenes I thought were really on the edge of your seat. They were very exciting. And I thought the movie did build up dramatic moments where I really felt involved and with the story, with the characters. I didn't feel like the movie dragged at all. The dialogue was especially good, especially the, the sarcastic, witty jabs that you come to expect with Star Wars films, you know, between some characters. I will admit it's not quite as good as the original trilogy, but I think it is much better than the prequels, and I can't wait to see what the next two Star Wars movies are going to be like. Number four on my list is Mad Max Fury Road. I got the poster right behind me here. Um, now, this was my first experience with Mad Max. I hadn't seen the other films, and as of now, I still haven't, but um, I didn't... I didn't quite love it like other people did, but I did enjoy it nonetheless. I thought it was a great over-the-top spectacle that's perfect for people that enjoy action movies. Director George Miller apparently used more practical effects and less CGI, and if that is true, it really could, the, you know, the final result was much realistic and very incredible if he did that. Um, I thought it was a very good movie for the big screen. I thought it moved at a frenetic pace that kind of helped show how crazy the characters are in this apocalyptic world. It had colorful photography, costumes, and the music really went well with the movie. But my only problems with it was that I felt like there were some some characters that lacked uh, development. For example, the villain and some of his, you know, like his son, you know, have um, sort of oxygen masks. I weren't sure if that if it was because you know they were ill. Or perhaps, um, you know, the atmosphere is actually bad and they're actually breathing in clean air. I don't know. The movie didn't really go into detail. Um, and, and, and also, again, there are a lot of characters and sometimes it got a bit confusing as to who was who. And I, I'll admit, I'm not really sure if this movie, because it was a great, you know, movie to see on the big screen, I'm not sure how well it's going to hold up on smaller screens like TVs or the computer or even your own phone. But I thought it was an exciting fun, you know, spectacle to go see uh, this past summer. Number three on my list is Inside Out. While it may not be quite as good as early Pixar movies, I thought it was much better than some of the last few movies that came out, and even The Good Dinosaur that came um, the November out after this movie. I thought that Inside Out was an imaginative and visually engaging film. The characters and situations I could relate to, and I mean, watching um, Riley, who's the little girl, uh, this movie brought back a lot of memories for me when I was watching this movie. Like when I was growing up, like I, I I also had to move, and it was you know I had some difficult situations at school and in my personal life. And the emotion characters themselves, you know, they had different personalities, of course, but they all worked very well together, and I found them to be very entertaining. The voices that were cast for the emotions, especially, were perfect. I thought they really brought out their personalities well, because since we aren't giving too much time to spend with them before the story takes off, I thought that, you know, getting these actors, you know, really get, helped get us, the audience, get ideas about who they were. The movie I didn't find to be predictable, and I kept guessing at what would happen next, so for me, I really enjoyed this movie. Number two on my list is The Peanuts Movie. When I first saw the trailer, I was excited. I mean, growing up, I, was wa I watched the classic TV specials and the animated movies, but I was a little bit skeptical because Hollywood does have a reputation of messing up characters in their adaptations. <coughs> Excuse me. But in the end, I don't think they really did. Even though it was done as computer animation as opposed to, you know, the hand-drawn animation, I think the film got the behavior and the look of the characters right. Charlie Brown is the underdog who can be a bit awkward, and the, and the movie worked as a tribute as well as a new story, and the theme of trying to, you know, be better is relatable, and the cartoon really did a good job at balancing, you know, funny gags with serious messages. I personally, you know, really rooted for Charlie Brown as he tried to better himself. The movie did have its share of slow spots that did come across a little bit like filler, and there was a modern pop song by Megan Trainer, I think, that was in the movie and it did kind of feel a bit out of place, but I thought it was a great film for fans, new and old, and, you know, families, and the humor was clean, there were some great gags, and, it, you know, a great lead character to root for. All right, what was, the, in my opinion, the best movie of 2015? That would be Ex Machina. Now, I w this was the science fiction movie that came out right um, at the dawn of the uh, summer blockbuster season. I went into this movie cold, and I ended up leaving the movie feeling both um, intellectually motivated and fascinated by it. It's a, it's a very suspenseful, smart, and very well-acted and directed film. The movie setting is a combination of contemporary and futuristic settings where people rely on technology. 
Um, the cast is mainly made up of three actors, and they all went on to appear in bigger projects uh, later last year. We have Oscar Isaac as CEO Nathan, Domino Gleason as Caleb. He is a programmer who is invited to Nathan's home to see his latest technological project, and Alicia Van Kender is an AI project. All three of them really contrasted each other very well. Gleason as Caleb is socially awkward, Isaac is a more sociable character, and Vikander is really believable as the robot. I completely, sometimes I forgot that I was watching an actress and thought I was watching an actual machine. Um, I forgot that sometimes, you know, her movement and her tone and her voice were just, just perfect. The score was great, and I really liked the theme of the abuse of technology. The dialogue flowed well, and this was done by a first-time director, Alex Garland, who kept the film moving at a good pace and kept, I think, the audience involved. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and go through the list. What were the seven movies that I thought were the best of 2015 based on what I saw? Number seven, The Avengers, Age of Ultron. Number six, Paddington. Number five, Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Number four, Mad Max. Number three, Inside Out. Number two, The Peanuts Movie. And the best movie of 2015, in my opinion, was Ex Machina. All right, well, that's my video. Uh, go ahead and post your comments about whether you agree or disagree with my choices. Are there some other movies that you think were better than some of my choices? And if you're interested, go check out my worst uh, list of 2015. And feel free to check out some other videos on the channel. Thank you very much for watching.